Hold up, hold up, Thug wanna play some new shit. Manchester United 2, Southampton 2, a tactical analysis. In this video, I'll be tactically analysing the game, looking at where United went right and wrong, and what they can do to improve, and at the end of the video, I'll be looking at each side's expected goals rate from this game. But before this video starts, remember to subscribe to the channel and click the bell, because I will be releasing videos on Tottenham and Chelsea later on in the week, as well as continuing my series on who Manchester United and Barcelona could sign this summer. So going into the game, Solskjaer lined up his unchanged side in a 4-2-3-1 with De Gea in goal, wan at right-back, Shaw at left-back, Maguire and Lindelof at centre-back, with a midfield double pivot of Pogba and Matic, Bruno Fernandes in front of them, Rashford starting from the left flank, Greenwood on the right and Martial up front. Ralph Hasenhurtle used a 4-4-2 with Alex McCarthy in goal, Cole Walker-Peters at right-back, Ryan Bertrand at left-back, Edna Rack and Jack Stevens as centre-backs with a midfield double pivot of James Ward-Prowse and Oriol Romeu, Nathan Redmond on the left of the midfield, Stuart Armstrong on the right, and Che Adams and Danny Ings up front. Unlike recent United games, Solskjaer's side struggled to dominate the opening proceedings, with Southampton pressing United aggressively in a narrow 4-4-2 shape. It was clear that Southampton were trying to negate Pogba's influence by blocking the pass into him. Ings and Adams stayed tight together, cutting off the passing lane, and James Ward-Prowse pushed up from the midfield line to pressurise Pogba in case a ball was fed into his feet. Because of this pressing tactic, Matic was forced to drop into a deep position wide of Southampton's front two pressers in order to get on the ball, and when this would happen, James Ward-Prowse Prowse would drop back into the midfield line to avoid a half space opening up in behind him for Martial and Bruno Fernandes to drop into. United's possession shape was similar to how they used it in previous games and you can check out my tactical analysis of United's previous games over the last few weeks and see for yourself as they will be linked in the description below. Pogba and Matic played as a deep midfield double pivot with one of them usually Matic dropping wide and deep to pick up the ball as I stated previously. This may seem insignificant, but it's actually a slight change in the tactic Solskjaer was using before lockdown, as previously it was Juan Bissaka who would retain a deep position, creating a back three, but this meant that United lacked width on the right flank. But now that it's Matic dropping deep to create a back three, not only does it give United two good and better passes of the ball than Juan Bissaka in those temporary wide centre back positions in Lindelof and Matic, but now Juan Bissaka can retain a wider and higher position, giving United's system more width. It was this sort of positional play that was key for United's second goal, but I'll come to that later on in the video. In possession, Southampton used a 4 triple 2 system, which Hassan Hurtle used at RB Leipzig. In this system, Will Prowse and Romeu sit as a deeper midfield double pivot, looking to draw the opposition midfield higher up the pitch to leave space in the half spaces for the wide midfielders to move in field into. With the two wide midfielders moving into narrow positions, this obviously reduces the natural width in the Southampton system, which is why we saw Southampton's fullbacks advance forward down the flanks to provide advance width in the system and stretch United's defensive shape. United pressed Southampton in their 4-2-3-1 shape, and when the ball was played back to the Southampton centre-backs, this would trigger an aggressive high press from United, with Fernandes pushing up alongside Martial and Rashford and Greenwood advancing into high narrow positions to create a 4-2-4 pressing system which has been extremely effective in recent weeks. However, it was Southampton's press that paid off sooner, with the Southampton press inviting a pass into Pogba, creating almost a box-like shape around United's central midfielder, allowing Ings to assert an aggressive trigger press on the Frenchman when De Gea played the pass into him and win the ball back in United's defensive third. From here, Redman had the presence of mind and weight of pass to find Armstrong at the back post, who controlled the ball before putting it past De Gea. This goal highlighted United's potential weakness that hasn't been evident in recent weeks due to the opposition sides not pressing as aggressively or as effectively as Southampton did in this game. While Pogba is phenomenal at progressing the ball from the defensive third up the pitch to start attacks, he does struggle sometimes when being impressed with his back to goal. This is a specialist skill as not many players excel in these types of situations, which is why players like Busquets and Rodri are so valuable in possession systems. United were able to equalise 8 minutes later, however, the ball was out on the right side of the Southampton defensive third and Pogba found Martial in the box with a low cross from a deep position. Martial, despite being crowded out of a shot, did excellently to hold on to the ball before laying it off to Rashford. Walker Peters should have held his position and cut off the pass into Rashford, instead of trying to move to close down Martial, as the pass to Rashford was Martial's only viable option, and when the pass was made, Rashford showed his class by slotting the ball into the bottom corner with his left foot. If it was Southampton's pressing which led to their first goal, it was their pressing that allowed United to get their second. As we see here, Southampton are pressing United high in their 4-4-2 compact shape, cutting off the initial passing lane into Pogba and forcing the ball out wide. Redmond pushes up to pressurise Lindelof in his own box, leaving Wan-Bissaka free. 
Bertrand isn't quick enough to pressurise wan when the pass is made, but the actual mistake comes in the centre of midfield. Romeo has pushed up, but is dragged away by Greenwood's movement. However, Ward-Prowse hasn't pushed up enough, leaving Pogba free for a pass in field. As we then see here, Ward-Prowse is stuck in two mines and drops off, but doesn't cut off the passing lane into the players behind him, allowing Pogba to split Southampton's system with one pass, and from here Bruno Fernandes moves the ball onto Martial, who like he did against Bournemouth, runs down the left flank, glides past Walker-Peters and then smashes the ball into to the back of the net past McCarthy. From about 25 minutes onwards, the Southampton press subsided and United were able to play off their defensive third a lot easier than before, which allowed Pogba and Matic to become more significant in the game. One thing I noticed in this game was that Rashford retained his advanced width a lot more than in previous games, whilst Greenwood continued to move inside into the half spaces, creating almost an advanced double pivot, with Fernandes moving slightly to the left side. The idea behind this was to keep Rashford wide in order to isolate him against Carl Walker-Peters in one-on-one -on -one situations. However, I continue to feel that wan on the right lacks the offensive ability to carry the attack on the flank. When United switch the play from the left to the right, wan needs to be able to get the ball and dribble forward to inject pace into the attack. However, this isn't his strong point as he often takes a while to get going, allowing the Southampton system to shuffle across and close up the space. Going into the second half, Southampton resumed their aggressive pressing and so did United, making it tough for both sides to progress the ball through the centre of the pitch. Southampton looked dangerous down the flanks because of the advanced positioning of their midfield and their two-striker system. We see here that when Armstrong picks up the ball that because Southampton are playing with two strikers, wan is drawn into a narrow position. Redmond, unlike a lot of times in the first half, held his width on the left flank and so had massive amounts of space when Armstrong was able to play a crossfield pass into his path. Similarly, on United's left flank, Rashford was also looking dangerous. He receives the ball here in a deep wide position and with a piece of skill and acceleration, he's able to motor pass Kyle Walker-Peters before playing a perfectly weighted through ball through to Martial's run. Martial cuts the ball back and Bertrand just about manages to race across and block Rashford's shot from just a few yards out. Even though Rashford was having joy when staying high and wide up the field, not following Walker-Peters' runs, this did allow Southampton to create from that right side. Here we see that Shaw is forced to move inside as Armstrong takes up a narrow position which leaves space for Walker-Peters to overlap into. He's able to isolate Shaw in a one-on-one -on -one before drilling a top-class ball across the six-yard box which in the end evades everyone including Ings and Adams. The game was a lot more even in the second half though apart from a few patterns of play down the flanks, Southampton weren't really creating much. The same could be said for United as they were heavily reliant on Rashford and Martial's individual dribbles to progress the ball into the final third and then to create chances, rather than through their possession system that had been so effective in recent games. Pogba coming off midway through the second half had a lot to do with this as it seemed that Solskjaer went into containment mode as he brought on Fred and McTominay. Instead of making these changes and continuing with the 4-2-3-1 shape, I thought Solskjaer should have switched to a 5 at the back system to negate the amount of space Kyle Walker-Peters had down that right flank, as a left back in a back 4 was always going to be drawn infield with Armstrong and Redmond's movement, which would therefore leave space on the overlap for Kyle Walker-Peters to make runs into. Having a fifth defender in that line would have allowed United to have someone in that wide position to stop Southampton continuously funneling attacks down that side, but still kept a compact back line, avoiding gaps being created. But complacency set in as Southampton were able to score from a corner late on in the game. You can see here that United have adopted a zonal marking system which does make it hard to pinpoint an individual mistake as it's more of a collection of mistakes in an unorganised system. Firstly, Bednarak should not be winning that first ball, no matter how good James Will Prowse's delivery is. The man at the front of that six yard box, which appears to be Matic, has to do everything to stop a flick on occurring. Whilst Maguire seems to be caught in an unnecessary entanglement in the six yard box, I don't think this caused the goal. Lindelof is certainly to blame at the back post for not being goal side of Obafemi, but there are two free Southampton players coming round the back as well, so a collection of mistakes rather than an individual error cost United three points in this game. If we look at the expected goals rate for both sides, we can see that United weren't unfortunate to lose a win at the end, as Southampton just edged them in terms of the expected goals, creating better chances statistically throughout the whole game, and it was really Martial and Rashford who put in the performances that looked to drag United over the end before Southampton's late goal. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed that video and haven't seen my other analysis of the other United games, check them out. They'll be in the description below, and remember to subscribe and give this video a like if you enjoyed it.